Hello, my name is Anne, your guide to when animals get even. If you like bloodthirsty animals getting back at humanity, then it would be a bucking good idea to subscribe. Today's animal has some thoughts about getting put onto the dinner table. It's deer. We'll start in Kentucky. Now, I wanted to give you guys some context behind the whole um, deer situation here. Uh, for those of us still harking back to our childhood and picturing Bambi, we're going to get serious about how wily these creatures can be. So while filming a segment for Kentucky Afield, the deer in question, a buck, decided he'd had enough and was done with the limelight. The ultimate result was a 45 minute long tussle between three full grown adult men and one buck. Once I keep looking at this. He got me. 45 minutes later. Bad boy. You alright? Now, yeah. yeah, he was hard to hold. He <laughs> needs to throw on the other way. The deer managed to successfully gore the um, fish and wildlife officer's leg, which ended up requiring minor surgery to repair. So. Not so gentle and docile and Bambi anymore, huh? As you can see in the video, deer don't always make it necessarily super clear what their intentions are. Uh, before they do it, they are very, very quick to change what they're doing. So, deer are an interesting animal for us to be going over because usually you think of deer. You don't think about danger. Of course not. But I think you'll see throughout this video that deer are a surprising threat. Let him go. Okay. He's after me. Southern Illinois University had to deal with a spate of deer attacks um, two years in a row. So the first series of attacks came in June. At least seven students were attacked. Um, in the following year, the attacks ended up coming a lot earlier in the fawning season compared to the year previously, so it was kind of a surprise to everybody. Um, three attacks by possibly a different deer, but they aren't actually certain, ended up sending four people to the hospital. It's believed that the injuries that were um, sustained were coming from mother deer who were being very protective over their fawns, and that the instinct of that overly protective nature, coupled with a squeezed um, environment so they just don't have as much room anymore, and maybe a dash of just a little too much human curiosity, is what has created this negative situation that the campus is dealing with with the deer. The latest encounters ended up happening within minutes of each other, and it is believed that it was the same doe responsible because it happened on the same footpath. There wasn't any evidence that those injured had been doing anything to provoke the deer or had been creating any kind of like chaos or problems, but again, it is spawning season, so mother deer are just a lot more sensitive. The attacks ended up happening so rapidly that all of them were reported in a single 911 call to police, which is just, okay. And some rapid fire deer attacks. There was a 30 year old worker. He suffered a gash to his forehead and that ended up requiring stitches. The next was a 46 year old employee who managed to get away with a sprained wrist and various cuts and bruises, but it was, you know, minor, minimal scrapes kind of thing. A 58-year-old student ended up receiving a scratch on the jaw. I'm not sure how deep it went or anything like that, but they didn't mention needing stitches, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was probably more superficial. But still, I mean, that's not a pleasant experience to have. The university has gone on record to state that they appreciate the deer, they like having them, and they don't want to get rid of them, but they also don't want anyone getting hurt. 
this kind of leaves them in a frustrating and difficult situation. You know, they have a, they have a few options, and all of them come with drawbacks. For options, we're talking um, relocating the deer, you know, tranquilizing them and all that, um, thinning them out through controlled hunts. Yeah. And the universe doesn't really want to go with any of that, so what they're gonna try instead is an educational campaign. Um, their hope is to bring together like students and workers um, and help to avoid these incidents in the future. They started the campaign so that they could get across to students like, if you see a deer bounding towards you, run away. Um, do not try to approach the deer at all if you see them. The seminar the university gave was aptly titled Avoiding Deer-Human Encounters of the Third Kind. So, somebody on staff had a sense of humor. The main issue, um, according to the university, is that they have a very beautiful campus. Very lush, very native. That means they have to deal with wildlife. Which... What a plug! Right? I mean, sure, I think most colleges end up having things like campus squirrels. My threat at college was guns. Uh, Southern Illinois campus threats, deer. I don't know. So I'm curious about y'all. Like, did you guys have anything interesting on your campus? What were your college threats? And were they as, you know, nice as deer? That's what I want to know. Let me know in the comments. Our next attack is in Aspen. So in Aspen Park, we have a group of women playing basketball and they're minding their own business. Just having a friendly game. But this woman ends up getting injured on her arm, uh, fending off a young mule deer buck. So this deer approaches the group of its own volition, and mind you, they're not trying to feed the deer. They haven't even they they know nothing about the deer in in general. They're there to play basketball. The woman in question she backs away to give it space, and I guess this was some sort of special signal to the deer, um, because then he charged her. So wildlife officials who investigated, which. Why do we not just call them wildlife investigators? And then, like, after this channel, I feel like I should be a wildlife investigator. And I should get to have a partner. And my partner will be a wombat. And his name will be Combat. And we'll be like a crime-fighting duo of wildlife investigators. And it'll be super cool. The wildlife officers who investigated found that the woman didn't do anything wrong. Um, she was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. They managed to track down the specific deer that did this, and so unfortunately, because the deer had a severe lack of fear of people, they had to put it down. Because again, you know, while most of us think of deer as these cute, sweet, shy little creatures, they can actually be very dangerous, and the wildlife investigators, you know, they track this deer down, it's not afraid of people at all. You can't rehabilitate that. There is no way to create a people phobia in the deer at this point in its life. Um, and that makes it very, very dangerous and completely unpredictable. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Habituation increases risk of danger. We have a deer that's wearing an orange collar. This woman sees the deer earlier in the morning. Um, she thought it was weird that the deer didn't seem to react to her dogs barking at it. But, you know, she just sort of brushed it off. No big deal. Um, it's something a little odd, but it's not anything to you know, be worried about. Unfortunately, when she later that day went to go check on her chickens, um, she saw out of the corner of her eye there's a deer charging towards her. She braced herself, but, uh... Yeah, no. That deer just ran right into her. She goes, she goes back 10 feet. She is on the ground. Um, she ends up in a position holding its antlers away from her vital organs. Um, protect your soft meaty bits. 
and she's screaming because she thinks she's gonna die. Her son hears this, he gets out there, he goes to help. So he manages to scare the deer off. But every time both their backs are turned to try and get her out, the deer is starting to creep up again. So he'd have to turn and scare it again. And so it was a very slow progress to get out of the danger area. Once they're inside, 911 gets called and they're just trying to minimize the bleeding. She had puncture wounds in her hand, in her right leg from the antlers. And then she also had injuries to her left knee and her shoulder, and that left her unable to walk following the attack. A lieutenant with the Department of Natural Resources Law Enforcement Division, which, like, what? That's literally never heard of this before until this story. Didn't know that was a thing at all. Basically, this is the first time he'd ever seen a deer attack a person. He figures that it's probably the result of someone who tried to domesticate the deer, so then it no longer feared people. And I think we it's pretty safe to say, because it was wearing the orange collar, that someone did try to domesticate it. Uh, there were neighbors that said this deer was a, you know, regular fixture of the neighborhood. Stop trying to domesticate wild animals, guys! We all want to have, you know, an army of squirrels at our command or pet possums, but stop trying to domesticate wild animals. You've got dogs. You can't, you can't see her. There are dogs, cats, fish, ferrets, bunnies. There's so many options for you that are actually like domesticated species versus wild animals that have completely different needs. Stop. You've probably never thought about it, and honestly, like, why would you? But deer antlers are very sharp. Antlers are not the same as horns, which means that it's just an endless cycle. Um, they grow, they shed, they fall off. And over and over again the cycle goes. They grow, they shed their velvet, they fall off, and it all starts again. Every year, if a deer decides to gore you, with their sharp antlers. That's pretty damaging. Squishy flesh, sharp thing, squish, shish kebab. But it is not just the antlers that you have to worry about. I came to work Saturday morning. But for Michelle Brewer. There was no time to do anything. Opening the store one Saturday morning recently was anything but a familiar experience. I remember seeing them and that was it. In this attack, uh, the victim, Brewer, was opening her shop, and it was a typical day. Typical, regular day. She parks her car, walks around the corner, and sees a herd of deer. There was no time to do anything between turning the corner and going, huh, deer, and what happens next? Look back, you know, the deer were coming this way. A herd of about nine deer barreling down the sidewalk ran right over Brewer. I could also hear their hoof print. So this herd of nine deer trample her in the middle of the, uh, I assume this is like a, this is, a, she's opening a store. This is not the middle of nowhere. Uh, we know it's not the middle of nowhere because also there were several witnesses. No, see, no, like that, you know. Tony Battle from his barbershop across the street couldn't believe his eyes. It was amazing. I mean, how that deer just hit her and picked her up, picked her up about this high. She was up in the air about that high. The air thing. They said that she was flipping up into the air, landed on her head. Not good. Anyone knows that's not good. And the rest of the deer just trampled over her. This is happening in a town, basically. Here's the sounds of their hooves on the sidewalk. She hears the sounds of the hooves striking her body, which is like horrifying. You know when you go to the dentist and they numb you up and you hear the drill, but you can't feel the drill, but you can hear it and it's like really like deep inside of you and it's like really creepy? I imagine it was something like that, but more horrifying. My, my cheek was out of here. Brewer though still dealing with the bruises on her face and all over her body from the accident, but she and everyone who saw her get run over by a herd of deer are still in disbelief. She got lion kinged, guys. That's what happened. 
yeah, it wasn't a full, like, 500 strong herd of wildebeest, but that is essentially what played out, was the Lion King. Ah! This next one is a bummer, man. <laughs> like, this woman is at home in Colorado. She's got her back door open because, like, it's nice weather. And she's just minding her own business. And a deer uh, invites itself into her house. Yeah. She doesn't know this deer. She didn't invite this deer over. This deer just lets himself in. It looks adorable, right? You're wrong because I don't actually know like the process of how precisely everything goes down in this situation, but somehow she ends up with scratches on her back from the deer. I don't know if it's maybe like antler scratches. I don't know if it's hoofs causing the scratches. I'm not entirely certain exactly what went down. There wasn't a lot of information in that regard. But it is believed that the neighbors were feeding the deer. When a deer loses its fear of humans, lights out. Don't feed wild deer. Leave them alone. They might come up to you looking for food. Do not encourage it. Like, accept that you had a really cool close-up moment and don't encourage it. Just, it's not good for them and it's not good for you. Okay? I know I sound like a nagging mom right now, but it's just to drive home because this is happening more and more frequently. People are just feeding deer and <laughs> it's a problem. And that's why I sound like a nagging mom and I'm sorry. Now we have a so-called rash of attacks by male deer. California wildlife officials had to give a warning for people to keep their distance from these animals. Officials believe it's, they state that they believe it's likely fluke incidents, but they couldn't outright dismiss that. Um, it's also thought that this is potentially a sign um, that increased human residential acreage causing pressure on deer habitat is causing the wild deer to start acclimating to people um, and therefore they're less frightened of people and this is a very bad thing uh, there's a lot of other animals that's happened with coyotes bobcats and you know for those ones people are like aware of it they're like oh that's bad that's dangerous oh oh mountain lions um and people are you know oh predatory animals like that's bad that's scary and they're not getting the same alarm bells for deer but they should be those alarm bells should be a ring-a-ding-ding -ding because not good for deer to be getting used to people either the first man attacked um i'm gonna try to say his last name dudik was a 73 year old he was in his garden um he was picking tomatoes it's believed that he was caught off guard in this attack a deer um charged him as a six foot tall buck so that's a big boy and it gored him so he ends up getting 220 stitches from the wounds he sustains. Yeah, let me say that again. 220 stitches. Where do you, when you hear that number, what do you think of? Because I think of shark attacks. I think of people who get actual limbs taken off by an attack. I do not think of a deer assault. One of the saddest parts is three weeks later, he ended up passing away because he had a pulmonary embolism which was more than likely a result of the attack he did sustain. So even though he had all those stitches, there's still, you know, damage gets done. He was 73. You know, I'm not saying that like, okay, if you're older, like, it's inevitable. It's just that the human body is, it gets frail. Um, it's inevitable. We're all gonna go through it. Some of us already are. Like, it just... It is what it is. I feel for his family really, really deeply. Um... Tough situation. So, further north, we have a, a couple. 
that was attacked while watering their friend's vegetable garden. So the woman, so first, the man gets knocked down and gets pinned with the antlers. And he's not like literally like pinned, like going through his body, but he's trapped. The antlers have enclosed him. <laughs> he's there whether he wants to be or not. So the woman tries to go to his aid. She ends up gording the arm. The whole like pin down with the antlers thing is just, it's terrifying. Like I would never want to be in that situation, but at the same time, the imagery of it is like kind of, kind of cool, which is bad. And I shouldn't think that way. Um, but yeah, no, moving on. She tried to scare it off with a piece of plywood and ends up gored for her troubles. So, yeah, um, basically, growing your own vegetables might sound super cool and super self-sufficient, but if you're in California, um, you might want to be aware of the bodily dangers posed to you by deer if you have a vegetable garden. In Orinda, male deer have attacked neighborhood dogs, and oh, this part is sad, and I don't want to do it, but I want to be fair to you guys and give you the full story and give you the full picture, so we're going to do it. No, I don't want to. Kermit was the first dog to have this encounter, and he's 10 year old. He ended up gored in the head and apparently he didn't bark before or during the attack look i i sometimes i open up i have a backyard a nice fence it's like an eight foot tall and sometimes i leave the door open when the weather's nice so the dogs can go in and out and in and out as they please because they have autonomy i don't always pay 100 percent attention to exactly what's happening out there because to me i'm like it's my backyard it's safe Obviously, this story is making me think twice, but if that owner was doing something similar, I mean, she might not have, she might not have known that that's what was happening. And it's, now that I've made myself sad, let's go to the next one. Uh, an elderly black lab was, who actually lives across the street from Kermit, was the next one that got targeted, but that... That dog survived. Um, that dog was okay. They were attacked within three hours of each other. So they don't actually know if it's the same buck that does it, that did it. Um, because yeah, you have like three hours of time and they did live across the street. So you'd think if the same buck was gonna do it, it would've just happened. So the next one is a buck trying to square up with a Jack Russell Terrier, which your first instinct might be, wow, those small dogs, not a chance. But like, if you've ever met one, <laughs> you would know that um, they are a lot. In this case, the owner notices the buck, notices the dog, realizes the buck is putting its head down like it wants to charge. And this owner just acts immediately with like no concern for themselves, with which just good job owner they pick up their dog and they go inside <laughs> they're not worried about the deer then charging them they're just like nope and left so that dog was okay but it was very clear that it would have attacked that dog without that owner there to do that that would have been a third attack there's no there's no doubt it's very very unusual for deer to go after dogs even in the breeding season they are typically afraid of dogs. It doesn't matter the size, uh, which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. So, which kind of lends more credence to the idea that this increase in human expansion residentially is putting pressure on this species and causing some of these new behaviors that are very dangerous to us, to our pets, everything. Like, because in the rutting, the breeding season, the bucks are usually typically they're focused on finding lady deer. They want the ladies. They don't even eat. They literally just want girls, which like, okay. Ooh. And I thought like human men could be a little much, but 
Wow. Um, so, but they're not paying attention to dogs. Or, if they notice dogs, they're getting away from them. That is not what happened here. So again, very unusual. Our final story takes us to the land down under. We're going to Australia. Australia. I think I'm going there in October. I'm really excited. But anyway, serious time. The deer in question in this story was not a random deer who wandered into this situation. This deer had been hand raised since it was a fawn. The man was only identified as MD. MD, 47, goes to feed this stag on his property and it is believed that it was stuck in the fence and he had to try and untangle it. What does he get? For his troubles, he gets brutally attacked. He's pinned to the ground. Luckily, his wife and son are there, um, like nearby. They find out this is happening. They rush to his aid. They bring an assortment, guys. They bring stones, sticks, like timber. So I say sticks, but I'm thinking like a two by four or something. I don't know. Um, timber and a crossbow to protect themselves, um, which is a very medieval and almost hilarious arsenal, but um, they were prepared. The son was going to go get a gun from the shed, but he hears his mom screaming, so he ends up just abandoning that and heading straight back over. Um, she went to save her husband, which, that's a brave woman. That is who you want as your wife. She ends up suffering life-threatening injuries that requires her to be helicoptered out to a hospital. So there weren't a lot of details as to what these injuries specifically were, and it was mentioned in every article about this that the husband and wife exchanged goodbyes because neither of them knew if they would survive. I don't know about y'all, I have actual legitimate goosebumps like it's kind of freaking me out like I don't know why I've read this story several times and it's never freaked me out like this but maybe it's because I'm speaking it as the first time I've said it out loud maybe that's what it is I don't know it's 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 a powerful thought she does live which is good and in some insane coincidence of I guess good fortune they live next door to a paramedic <laughs> The paramedic hears all this happening? I'm not sure, probably hears the screams, the commotion. He goes out there, he has a gun. Now, I don't know what kind of gun he has. I don't know how close he is to the deer when this happens. I'm not entirely sure the full circumstances. For anyone who knows things about guns, you'll, you can work with me here. Um, he fires three shots at the deer. All, every article, the only thing the article say is the deer didn't seem affected. So I'm not sure if these are warning shots. But he says he fires at the deer, so probably not warning shots, right? But the deer seems unaffected. So it's either bullets hit and this is some monster terminator deer or they miss because, you know, like, Again, I don't know what kind of gun he has or how close he is to the deer. So again, I don't know if we have warning shots, missed shots, or a psycho insane murder deer. I don't know. What I do know is he's able to get in the enclosure and he gets the wife out first. He gets the wife out, um... I presume he's probably giving the son a bunch of instructions about like what to do and everything um, because he goes in to try to get the husband. So unfortunately, yes, the wife lives, but the husband does pass at the scene. So yeah. When police do arrive, um, they end up dispatching the deer. It's described as euthanizing but I I don't 
don't know that they meant it in the actual, um, you know, the medical sense, or if they meant it in the in the very literal sense. Uh, the, the articles did not elaborate. Um, these are the questions that we just get to be haunted by forever, and I'm sure sometime tonight I'll lay in bed, I'll be this close to drifting into blissful sleep, and then it's gonna burp. What did it mean by euthanizing? Did they just like chalk them full of lead? Did they have a needle? What happened? What did they mean? That's gonna happen to me tonight, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. This happened in April, and the running season starts in late March and goes for five to six weeks. So yeah, we could all say like, oh, then it's obvious why this happened. But keep in mind, this deer is six years old. This has never happened before with the deer. So this deer was a cross between a red deer and an elk. Now, red deer, um, the males can get sexually mature as young as 10 months, and for elk, it's 16 months. This deer is six years old. 10 months isn't even a year old, and 16 months is like a year and a half old. God, it's not even a year and a half, is it? It's like a year and a little extra. And it's true that like elks typically don't mate until they're slightly more mature, like, and can compete with, like, the big antler boys. But this, he doesn't, this, this deer does not have those pressures. He doesn't have any of that. So actually, was it because of the rutting season at all? Was this something else? Like, I didn't check if they had checked this deer for, like, because none of the articles mention this. But now I'm wondering, like, what if... He had something. What if he had a disease, a condition? What if he had freaking rabies? Which, you know, just because they're herbivores doesn't mean they can't get it. Any animal, any mammal can get rabies. Rabies is a neurological virus. It travels the nervous system, which means if you have a nervous system and a brain, you can get rabies. Artificially, you know, injected into you or not, technically, you are susceptible to rabies. It may be easier to take root in mammals, but there are cases of it happening in birds. Anyway, I'm sorry. We've talked about this. Rabies is my favorite virus. Rabies, my favorite virus. I could go on and on. But the point is, it's true that we didn't see this deer biting or anything like that, but if he's in the very early stages, which is just unchecked aggression, I don't know. It's hard to blame it on the rutting season when you have all this background about, like, when are they actually sexually mature? This deer is six years old. Like, if he was gonna have... His rutting would have come, like... I don't even know if he was, like, castrated or anything. So, like... I have so many more questions now. Oh, I'm gonna be haunted so much more at night now. Oh my gosh. What did we learn today? Deer might seem cute. But they are mighty, and mighty dangerous. Bambi is not your friend. That's so sad. I take it back. Bambi is your friend. Um, live Bambi is not your friend. That makes it sound like dead Bambi is. Forget it. I don't know. If you liked this video and you want more bloodthirsty animal content, be sure to subscribe right now! I am here Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Bye. Boop. What did it mean by euthanizing? Did they just like chalk him full of lead? Did they have a needle? What happened? What did they mean? That's going to happen to me tonight, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. So stupid.